Morning, everybody. February 5th, 2022. Uh, after range for practice, we're just in the middle of the ceasefire right now. I just finished sighting in the Valmet with some blazer, and then I'm going to try a couple of different uh, uh, rounds uh, at 50. Mainly today was going to be Winchester 75 day. Because I, I normally keep accurate records of, of uh, groups and what it likes uh, with pictures, and then I use them to post up on videos and compare and that sort of thing. And for the life of me, I can't find it in my cloud. Um, so I don't know, maybe I accidentally deleted it, or maybe it disappeared only to reappear later. So I only have a kind of a fuzzy memory on what it really prefers. And um, because I disassembled that uh, barrel band screw, I'm going to have to um, adjust it again, play again with it. Maybe not today, but get it ready for apertures. Got a 24 power scope on it, so we'll see. I'm gonna pause it right here and I'll check back in with you guys when I get it uh, going. See you soon. So I'm at the end of my shooting session here and I wasn't able to film any video today. Uh, the range was super busy with some instructions going on for outlaw and precision rimfire, uh, NRL type stuff. And there was some gentleman being pretty loud talking next to me, so it was just, I didn't think it was a good time to to film. But anyway, everybody's gone now, I'm totally by myself. I think it's the first time ever in this range it's been like that. Unless it's like really bad conditions. Uh, I got the Winchester 75 here, which has been uh, an absolute joy to shoot. Um, so hopefully you guys can hear a little bit. I'm just gonna film a couple. Uh, I'm shooting out at 200 right now, and there's um, about a four inch gong, I think. Um, I'm just kind of plinking and having fun with it. But hopefully you can hear the report. As I miss. <laughs> just some high velocity stuff I'm fooling around with. I don't know if you can hear it or not. But it was a good day all around shooting. That one sounded a little bit different. Uh, yeah, it was a good day. I had a good time today. It was uh, playing around with the uh, 75 and the... Um, Valmet uh, on different uh, ammos. I did quite a bit of ammo testing with this guy right here and uh, Trigger performed really well. I had about um, I don't know maybe three or so failures to um, Catch cycling the bolts, which is way better than it was before um, And uh, had no other issues other than that Other than this really annoying problem of the ammo hitting the scope and falling back in. I hope you can hear that. That's 200 meters. This is Blazer. Uh, it's smacking it pretty good. I did a lot of playing around with Blazer today. And... Um, I didn't shoot any uh, CCI standard today because, well, to be honest with you, I've been shooting so much CCI standard in my, my Anschutz that I, uh, I didn't want to kill everybody with CCI standard, so I just didn't bother. Um, I figured I'd skip the CCI standard. I've done enough shooting with that, I figured. If it wasn't for this... Man extraction issue like basically every round this rifle would be a blast to shoot but with the scope uh, you know it's so annoying it drives me crazy so I think I'm leaning more and more towards uh, shooting this rifle in a match with the original sorry move this here original apertures now that I've I did some like I said I forgot my my well, I deleted or something my original um, ammo testing I did with it. So I had kind of a vague idea I remembered. So 
I had to set up the barrel band again, uh, tuner rather, so I did that. Uh, and then I shot some ammo that I kind of remembered I liked. So I got some pretty good results with that and kind of kind of know what will work with the apertures. So if I set it up with apertures, I'll come back out with the spotting scope and get on point with it. It's such a fun gun to shoot, except for this. And I didn't do it that time, but it's been doing it like several times per, for every mag. And it gets, uh, <laughs> it gets old, let me tell you. But, you know, having no problems hitting, uh, hitting gongs at all today, so, and I, uh, I did play with it a little bit of a hundred, but, uh, not too much. Um, like I said, there was kind of some activity going on the range today. It made, uh, some things kind of hard. So I just wanted to do some, some 50 yard shooting today with it to get an idea, uh, for when I put the apertures back on. And, you know, like I just played around with that trigger and had to reset the barrel bands. So, um, all in all, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's, uh, such a great shooting rifle. Everything about it uh, functioned well today. Um, like I mentioned, I had a little bit of feeding issues with SK flat nose, which isn't unusual because of the flat profile. A couple of rifles I have, not every, you know, every one out of every maybe 10 rounds wouldn't feed directly in the chamber, would butt up against the chamber face, um, breech face rather, which, hey, that's, it's not unusual. When I switched to standard plus, SK standard plus, I uh, had no problems whatsoever. And uh, SK Standard Plus is the winner in this rifle. Tried some rifle match, didn't do as well, believe it or not. And then I tried a couple different kinds of Ely, but I remember, excuse me, Ely didn't shoot well in it at all, and that was the case again today, so. I actually have shot SK Magazine in this, that bulk stuff, and it did really well too. I don't have any of that right now, because no gun on I've ever had before shot reasonably well with that. This is actually, I think, well, maybe there's been one or two, but this is one of the few rifles that actually seem to like it. It shot just a hair better, better with SK Standard Plus uh, than flat nose. Um, there's quite a cost difference between the two. I don't know if there is any more because I still, want, you know, I still have quite a bit when I bought it before. But it used to be a couple of dollars difference a box, but I think nowadays that's that's changed to be they're probably pretty comparable. And there's I'm shooting flat nose basic, and uh, I think there's a flat nose target now, and maybe that's replaced a basic. I'm not sure, but. SK Standard Plus varies wildly locally. It's like 10, 11 bucks a box of 15 in one spot and then 15 bucks a box in another spot. So I think the last time I bought it, it was 10, 10 bucks a box. Uh, I think so. I think the flat nose was eight or nine, eight something last time I bought it. So prices have been going up and up and up fast. So uh, those numbers are probably not accurate. But anyway, uh, the this beauty here performed really well. And uh, just have my my scope on it for dope today to kind of get an idea. Not dope, sorry, for ammo testing to see what it liked. So I'm I'm happy with that and uh, happy with its performance. Uh, the trigger is a little bit quirky. Like I would have liked to have had 100% success today, but nope. I get the failure to set now and then. And uh, I only had one failure to fire on a blazer during testing, and it was a. I tried three or four times. It was a dud dud. So, but other than that, everything clicked and went bang with no issues that I remember. Actually, I think I remember there was one, yes, there was one SK Standard Plus that uh, was a dummy as well, which, eh, it's a little bit weird, but other than that, I even tried some Center X in this and didn't do very well. I tried some Lapua Super Club, some older stuff. I don't remember what that's been replaced with now. I think it's, I think it's Midas Plus now, but it's uh, it's an old older stuff. I still have a... Uh, I still have a, uh, quite a bit for it, but still a brick, a brick plus. Anyway, so I tried that. I didn't like that either. It just seemed to like the modern SK, those two, flat nose basic and standard plus, which is good because I have quite a bit of. But anyway, I'll, I'm going to stop this here and I'll, I'll show you guys the targets uh, later on and you'll get a good sense of how this rifle did today and whether or not... It's going to be uh, an aperture gun for the match, or maybe I'll put the apertures on the Velmet, because the Velmet has a similar problem with it falling back in the action. And so the Velmet's annoying too for that. 
uh, about half the time they bounce back in the action, so I'm kind of thinking about putting apertures on it. I don't have the original apertures that came with it. I have some modified, like, I don't know what they are. i got to look at them again, but they're, they're crazy looking. And that would be a good choice because the trigger is much better on the Velmet, and uh, it's a little bit more comfortable to shoot in position. But this gun's pretty rad. I wouldn't mind uh, shooting it as an, as an aperture gun. You know, like, the, the trigger's the main thing with me. I just wish it was better. It's good, but I just wish it was match level. Because you'll see some of the results today from the accuracy testing, and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. This is an accurate gun. And for what it is, man, it shoots good. Um, I think I, well, I'll go over that in the video later. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, everybody. Well, back from the range. Um, it's kind of like an interesting day today. It was, I would say, ideal conditions for shooting. There was very little wind here and there, but nothing major. It's kind of like overcast and so no sun to deal with. So conditions were great. Um, I wanted to start off by saying, first and foremost, the start of this range session, uh, because this was more Winchester 75 day than a Valmet day, even though I brought both, because both I'm considering for aperture shooting for the next match, because both of them have the same extraction ejection issue where they hit the scope and fall back in, and it's quite annoying. So I, I'm really tempted to shoot a match with apertures because I love apertures, so I'm not 100% I'm not that I'm going to do it, but I wanted to bring both out. I lost the information or misplaced it for the... The ammo selection that the um, Winchester liked so I wanted to go out today and kind of start it and get some decent information I kind of had a vague memory of what it did like so um, I knew I had somewhere to start a baseline so I wanted to say first and foremost because I took it out of the stock for for the video and the, the barrel band adjustment screw the tuning screw I had to start uh, from scratch to adjust it and so I shot some groups um, as I dialed it, just to show you guys how extreme things could be. I chose CCI Blazer because it's a good practice round, because the beginning part of the testing, there's no point in shooting decent ammo because it's all over the place. And then in my experience with this particular rifle, not everyone with a built-in tuner, but this one, once you find a sweet spot, it seems to work for a wide range of ammunition. So I was comfortable that whatever I found um, for a setting, once I switched to do ammo testing, I could fine tune it either way and it would be it would be pretty accurate. Some guns you gotta do this this testing throughout every brand of ammunition until you find it, but this one I found from previous testing how it works. So we're not looking for groups is my point here. We're looking for a change in groups from tuner setting. Alright. So excuse the rip target, it was getting pretty dog eared at the end. So this is all blazer at 50 in pretty much ideal conditions, and it was going from bottom to up. Okay, that's the way I was shooting. Okay. So the first group of the day, uh, an inch, and I didn't measure them all, but you get a sense, okay? And then we, I made an adjustment to the tuner setting, so like a full turn, and then you can see there's some, some changes. Now, as you tighten this, you might get fall into a sweet spot, and then you tighten it another turn, and then it opens up again. And then you're tempted to go back, but what you're really supposed to do is should remember that setting, write it down or whatever, and keep going up the adjustment range. And then when you find and you remember, let's say five full turns was a sweet spot, you go back there and then you go to four and a half, or you go to five and a half, five and three quarters, five and a quarter, and you play with it a little bit. So we started with here with just basic uh, full rotation of contact, and then another full turn, and another full turn, and then I hit kind of a sweet spot. So that would be, if you don't count the first turn, that would be one, two, three, okay? So on the fourth turn, we started getting some some better groups. So this one, there is a flyer here, and this is Blazer, right? So you got to remember that. We had a .351 cluster and a flyer. Even here, I didn't bother measuring, but that's small with a flyer. Uh, half an inch group here. And so we go from an inch at the bottom. There's a th couple of three quarters, an inch here. But it's slowly tightening up, Okay. Then we got up to the top and uh, we were kind of, I kind of was getting a sense of where the sweet spot was. And so I was comfortable with that. And like, I hope you can see the changes. So each row is a, is a turn. Okay. And like when you get a sense with one of these, like I've spent a lot of time with the Winchester, so I have a good idea. It's, it's, you have to interpret this data with, with the ability in mind to fine tune this screw more once you find an ammunition that's actually decent. So Blazer's not decent ammo. 
in in this gun, but you can see that there's a change. If there was no change, they'd all look the same. So our baseline, like our start, was basically an inch group, we, I'd say. And then we were shooting kind of half inch groups in that region. Like some of these are, are they're definitely getting smaller. Okay, so that's kind of important to remember. Anyway, so that was the testing. And then I moved on to trying some different ammunition. So I tried SK Flat Nose and SK Standard Plus and some Ely Contact uh, at the end. So I'm using the, the, the best setting I found on that was just some slight turning here and there. So as you can see, once we switched, this first group was from CCI Blazer to SK, so it doesn't really count because it's seasoning the barrel still. I didn't bother cleaning it because we're not at that stage yet, okay? But right away, a 0.356 group, 0 0.427, 0 0.459, 527, didn't measure that one. Look at this group, a 0.273. But you can see that the consistency is better from Blazer. Like, that's a great group. That's a great group too. I don't know if that was me, I don't remember, but these circles are an inch. So you're talking about that's, you know, three quarter inch group. 0.423, this is with standard plus. I had a wicked flyer here, it was not me. So, but anyway, that's a small four shot group. 0.685 there, a non flyer here. I don't remember if that was me again. I noticed quite a few flyers throughout the day and that and a rifle can, can be many different things. N not having to do with, with tuning, but there's a 0.449 there from, from SK. And then when I switched to Ely, like the first group was really bad and it was, I wasn't impressed with the results, so I stopped shooting. This two-shot group here, the guys are insisting on a ceasefire all of a sudden. I wasn't really paying attention to what they did, so I decided just to start over. Rather than continue this group after a cold bore, it wouldn't have made sense. So this group, was that's why it looks like that. It's not from down here. It's just because everybody wanted to do a ceasefire, and rather than finish the I was just like, whatever. They interrupted me, so I figured I'd, I'd just stop right there. But you can see, like a .273 group from an 83-year-old... <laughs> sporter style rifle with kind of a medium heavy barrel playing with a tuner screw and a not ideal scope mount all sorts of excuses I could make for it but like that's that's impressive so I will say you know average we're probably looking at point, point 0.3 groups with um SK standard plus on average at 50 and uh like I'm thrilled with that and like other than a couple of anomalies which I'm going to investigate because you know, normally when you get flyers like that with a decent ammo, ammo like SK uh, Standard Plus which I found to be quite good like I had three similar flyers in a row so that tells me there's something going on with like a, a firing pin spring or something like that something's not giving correct ignition or I have to check into it a little bit more maybe this is a, a bad lot of SK Standard Plus too like a bad brick for example I'm not sure but uh, very strange but I'm super encouraged by the group size. And if you remove those flyers and add them to there, you've got more of these. So excellent performance from the Winchester 75. Also today I fooled around with the Valmet. And um, I think before I've showed a couple of groups with Blazer because it really likes Blazer. So today I thought I would show you how much it likes Blazer. So I didn't get crazy with the... I'm trying to not, not spoil it. <laughs> so here's some groups that I shot beginning of the day with Blazer. So at 50, same thing. Okay, so on this page we've got a 257. Uh, I didn't measure those, but 340, 424, 423. And that's from, I started here and went up. Okay, so this would have been clean bore successfully. So anyway, we're shooting like quarter inch groups towards the end. So that's uh, <coughs> a good representation of how much this gun likes Blazer. And that's with that 30 power uh, old school Lyman scope on it. Then I switched to some, because uh, I had the flat nose and the um, standard plus out. So I switched to that. And you can see here that, yes, the groups are overall a little bit better. 215, 351, 385, 396. You know, there was a 437 or a 348. So you can see that the, the, the Standard Plus gave better results, more consistent than the Blazer. But we're not talking about a shocking amount, right? For an ammunition that's basically double the price, it's not that far off. So this is why I, I plink in certain rifles 
with Blazer. It's also excellent, as you guys have seen in the Schultz and Larson. So it's a good example here on, on why some ammunition, even though it is not good in most rifles and just barely decent in so many, is near awesome in others like this Valmet. And so that's why it pays to do a lot of ammo testing, even with budget ammunition, because where this ammunition will fall apart at like 100, let's say, if you just want to get trigger time and lots of practice time, I will choose the Blazer because it is so close. Like obviously if I'm going to go, I'm going to start getting into rifle match and stuff like that, which I didn't bother shooting today, but it definitely prefers SK that much more, a little bit more. So if you're shooting, if you're shooting for groups and that matters, SK would be the way to go. If you're just shooting to practice and you know, you're getting out to the range and having a good time, Blazer all day, which is why I've always shot it in this rifle. So anyway, that's, that's a good example of what the Valmet can do when it's on point. And, uh, you know, you're talking probably that's an average with SK. You're looking at high twos, low threes, probably. And with blazers, you're probably looking at high threes, low fours. That's what I would say. There are a couple of, you know, like that's not the greatest cold board group there. But otherwise, these are very consistent groups, as you see. A couple of flyers here and there. Again, this is back, like this is with the blazer, which we had earlier with the Winchester. No big deal. Everybody expects that. But this mysterious flyer is back with that SK. Uh, here's another one here. There's another mysterious flyer. There's one that, you know, so I'm wondering if it's actually that, that brick. I'll have to look into that some more. So anyway, that's that one there from the Valmet. Great session with the Valmet today. And then the final thing of the day was, while I was shooting, a competitive shooter arrived um, that shoots all over and shoots competitively. These, these not just the matches that I went to, but the uh, PRS style matches, NRL 22 type matches. Anyway, he, uh, he had a full... Voodoo build, chassis, uh, Athlon scope, the whole nine yards, and he had just showed up after ceasefire, nice guy, and so I noticed that he had to wait now for the next ceasefire, so I offered him to shoot one of my pages, because I had put up s uh, several, so I didn't have to change them, I had a blank one. So he was super pumped, and he shot a couple groups, a cold bore group, and then two more, just to get a zero. And, you know, I'm always, obviously not going to tell you his name or whatever, and it doesn't make a difference, but I got some groups from a very high-end rifle shooting sk uh rifle no sorry, sk long range um from a voodoo at 50 and i thought i'd show you guys um besides some groups from the valmet with blazer okay so this was this cold bore 355 247 180 okay and there was mine with the blazer high-end voodoo probably ten thousand dollar gun <laughs> my Valmet, right? So the point of all that is you reach a point where you have to say to yourself, wow, that $10,000 Voodoo shot a 247. Okay, well, my Valmet shot a 215 with SK Standard Plus. The point to that is, is that a lot of these old guns, yeah, they're old and they're quirky and they don't have ejectors, half of them, and all this sort of thing, but they can shoot. Most definitely. Anyway, I thought I'd share that for with you guys. It was kind of uh, kind of fun to see, um, and that winner of the day is the Voodoo. <laughs> what a beautiful group that is! Beautiful rifle. If you like chassis guns, you know, like I don't know a lot about chassis guns. Uh, I've never really followed them too much, but um, I know I know that uh, any time a gun of any any sort shoots groups like that. And, you know, like, I'll throw a couple of mine up there, too. And, like, anybody's gun. Doesn't matter what it is. You're out there. You're having fun. It really pays to um, do your research with ammunition. Anyway, that's the update from today. I had a great time. Everything was all good. Uh, but I quickly wanted to show you. Yesterday, I showed you the Winchester 75's factory apertures. I don't have the factory apertures from the Valmet. But I have the ones that were fitted. I remember I said they were quite weird. So, we have... Um, Believe it or not, this is a very high-end Parker Hale. Okay, this is an actual made-in-England Parker Hale style front sight. Okay, so this fits on the uh, Valmet's dovetail. And it has a very unusual made-in-Australia central peep sight. Now, it's been modified. It has some sort of rear-adjustable aperture. I, I couldn't find a name on it, but 
screwed in there. It's been heavily modified, and somebody at one time shot this in competition, I have no doubt. So it has a custom base milled for the dovetail because the Valmet is a very strange slot in the side of the action. So this one's meant to fit in the dovetail. And these are, these are beautiful, progressively marked apertures. I don't know what they're from exactly. Uh, there's all sorts of patent numbers on it. And like, I did some, like, look at that. That's a custom thumb wheel. I did some, uh, some research on this and like, this is well made. Somebody made that, right? Anyway, I did some research on this, and I believe this is from a military uh, rifle, centerfire originally. I think in Enfield even. I can't remember. i got to do some more research. But this goes right on, and uh, it's set up. This is the setup. So, you know, you might see the Valmet with these. Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm very pleased to have them because uh, they're really high quality. They're a little bit unusual, which I always like. They're old, so that's kind of cool. And uh, I always like to try and get guns with uh, the factory sights or, or a sight set with them because I enjoy shooting apertures so much. And I haven't been actually doing a lot lately because I've just been focusing on different things like this precision match. But because aperture sights are welcome there and there's one other fellow who shoots them, I think it might be a blast to do. Anyway, so uh, I think expect probably the Velmet with that. I don't know. I have to decide if I'm going to do the Winnie. Or the Valmet, one or the other. Maybe I'll pull out that Remington too. It's got some nice Anschutz match uh, diopter sights on it too. The 540XR. So I got three to choose from. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do. I'm probably leaning towards the Valmet because these are so rad. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to link all these together and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot.